Time to tantalize your earbuds with creative makers and shakers. It's Creative Living, the podcast with Jane Klaus. Welcome to Creative Living. I'm Jane. Uh, love that you're joining me today. Actually, I should say love that you're joining us today because my amazing guest is standing by. So, but before we get started, you know, one of my favorite creative activities is cooking. My Greek father. Oh yes. The Greek dad. He also owned a diner, by the way, had me in the kitchen at six years old. My mother had me taking culinary courses at the age of seven at our community center. So cooking has just always been an important part of my life as, as is to so many of us, including my special guest today. She is a rock star in the kitchen, as well as a co-host on the Kitchen. It's the TV series on the Food Network. You've also seen her as a host of Beach Bites with Katie Lee on the Cooking Channel, a judge for the Food Network's Halloween Baking Championship, Meat Sweats, love that, uh, and also What Would Katie Eat? She is a cookbook author, and I know you may, you'll wake up with her on all the morning show cooking segments. Please say hello, and I'm excited to welcome to the show Chef Katie Lee Beagle. Hi, Katie. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. It's great to thank you for taking the time to chat with us about the creative aspect of cooking and all things culinary. You know, I have to say, I love the kitchen in my house. I mean, I love my kitchen. Oh, thank you. But I love your show. Your kitchen. (laughs) No, no, I I, I do love the kitchen. I love to spend my time in the kitchen. But I know I love your show, The Kitchen. How many seasons is this so far? Do you know, um, we actually just finished our 34th. Season, 34. Which is pretty crazy. Yes, yes. So 13 episodes make up a season. Um, we've been on the air almost 10 years. Uh, amazing. And you you host The Kitchen alongside Sonny Anderson and Jeffrey mm-hmm. Zakarian and Jeff Morrow, who we love here. He's a local Chicago yes. guy. Good friend. Yeah. yeah, good friend of the radio show I work on. Um, and we actually went to the same college, by the way. Uh, his energy is great. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, we went to the same college. And, and he's just, I, you know, it's kind of, I know I'm through circles of people, but it's great to see his success. You work with this amazing lineup. What is that like to go in and film with these people? You know, we have such a good time together. It's very genuine. And we've gotten to know each other so well that these people feel like extended family members to me now. And so uh, we laugh and we kid and joke. And I know about their families. We have a group text chain where we're constantly sending each other pictures and texts. And it's just a really nice group of friends. And I think that that's that resonates with the audience. People who watch our show can tell that we're genuinely friends and it feels like we're bringing them right into the kitchen with us and they're our friend as well. Yeah, I mean, you could feel that when you're watching the show. Do you kind of feel like you're always hosting a dinner party because not only are you guys there, but you know that the audience is watching like right along with you? Mm -hmm. And also we have the ability to connect with our audience because of social media. And so people can give us real-time feedback and interact with us, post pictures when they're making our recipes and tag us. So it does feel like a real community that we've created. It's so much fun. And the success is fantastic. And of course, you know, celebrity chefs and people are taking pictures, like you said, on social media of all the food that they're cooking or they're eating. Before this show started, I know you were really into cooking for a young age. You kind of, you grew up in the Mm -hmm. kitchen growing like I did. Um, Were you doing TV before? And then, and how did you get this gig? Yeah, so I had done some TV before. Um, not uh, a ton. I had hosted the first season of Top Chef, and then I I did cooking segments on um, CBS News, but I was kind of at the point where I thought I'm going to take my career in a different direction. Um, I was always really into writing, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just focus on that. And um, I got a call from my friend, who was also my agent, and he said, there's this new show on Food Network uh, that they're casting. Why don't you go in and audition for it? And I said, we've pitched the Food Network so many times. They're not into me. I don't think this is going to happen. I was actually, I I was in LA um, and and he said, you need to get your butt on a plane and get back here and do this. (laughs) And I'm so glad that I listened to him because it turned out that that was 
the kitchen mm-hmm. and, and I got cast in it. And it's been the biggest professional blessing of my life, but also personally, because through after the kitchen, I, I did a, a travel show called Beach Bites for the cooking channel. And that's where I met my husband. So oh. it really did change the course of my life. Isn't that crazy? Just one decision, mm-hmm. one bit of advice from one person can literally mm-hmm. make all the difference in the direction of where you go. It really does. And I think it just goes to show to be that you've got to be open mm-hmm. and, and take chances and take opportunities and, and see where they lead you. I think that's fantastic. Now, the show or this podcast called Creative Living Creativity is everywhere, not only in the craft room or in the shed, the toolbox, the gym, wherever you want it to be, and the pen and the paper. Creativity is a key ingredient in cooking. So is it more important to experiment with new flavors or textures or maybe the presentation, or is it all one and the same when it comes to cooking, especially for a chef? Oh, I think it's everything. Uh, and you can find inspiration anywhere that um, when you're looking for it, or sometimes even when you're not, something just comes across uh, and you think, oh, I can do this or that with this. Um, so for me, it's all about trying new textures, new flavors, new cooking methods all the time. Do and you- I feel like my cooking is constantly evolving as well. As it should be, just like we should always be learning and growing. And do you have mm-hmm. sort of an unexpected ingredient that you like to use? Hmm, an unexpected ingredient. Well, I I love garlic salt. <laughs> 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 Maybe that is a little unexpected. Um, I I still I, I use fresh garlic, obviously, <laughs> but I think garlic salt really makes um, uh, just adds a punch to your food. And brings up the flavor level. So even if I'm adding fresh garlic, a lot of times I'll add either garlic salt or garlic powder as well. I love that. So if you do garlic salt, then do you omit salt? No, I do a, a combo. You do a combo. And really, salt is the number one most important thing when it comes to cooking. Right, but you don't want to over salt, right? No, but it's, most of the time people under salt their food. And it's so important to season aggressively. I'm going to, I wrote garlic salt down in my paper because I'm going to start using it in my cooking. Mm -hmm. Uh, When we're going into the kitchen, your favorite cooking technique, because I know there's so many ways to do things and everybody has one that they lean into. Do you have one? My oven. I Mm. I love a sheet pan supper. Um, Now that I'm a mom, I feel like I am always trying to do something that is a little quicker, a little easier, less cleanup. So I love to be able to put everything on a sheet pan and put it in the oven. That's good, too. I was just looking up some sheet pan recipes, and I'm sure we can find some in your cookbooks, too. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes, and I, I always post them on Instagram. Those are the ones on my Instagram that everybody likes the most. Um, so I, I love a sheet pan, and I love anything that I can prep in advance. Like, especially on weekends, uh, I feel like, it, it, we're still in the phase of uh, a nap schedule mm-hmm. ruling our life. <laughs> so, yeah. When my daughter takes her nap, I get everything prepped for our dinner so that we can enjoy those couple of hours before dinner time and go out and about and do whatever it is that we want to do and come home and dinner can be ready. And I, I mean, I feel that way during the week. But there's something about on the weekend that I I want to be able to go out and have fun. My husband works all week. So that's our our time to um, be together as a family. And so I get everything prepped in that nap time. And then we have easy breezy dinner. You are good to go. I love that. I'll do that on a Sunday so that I can eat some leftovers into the week because we get super busy in the week. Now, you're a busy mom and you're a busy person. Mm -hmm. How important is tablescaping to your meal? Is that a must do or sometimes you're just plopping it on the table and let's go? Let me tell you, it's real low on the (laughs) floor. to me right now if i'm having a dinner party i'll go all out and i i enjoy getting things set when i'm having company but if it's the three of us we are just sitting and eating <laughs> i agree i agree with that so and then i want to move into food and wine pairing and i want you to talk about the importance of it so now is it wine with every meal not every meal i mean listen i love a glass of wine i oh, know me too that's and why I, I thought I, of it i'm I, like oh 
<laughs> I, I I like if if it's Tuesday and it's been a long day, I I want to be able to um, it, it open a bottle of wine and have a little splash before bed. Um, <laughs> and then when it comes to food, I, I think it's just natural to want to pair food and wine. Um, it goes together uh, hand in hand. And I, I think people stress a lot about what pairing mm-hmm. makes sense and, mm-hmm. and, oh, am I supposed to pair white with this or red or what is this supposed to taste like? And at the end of the day, I think it's about what you enjoy and what you want to drink. Um, now that we're moving into the warmer weather months, I love rosé. Mm-hmm. And I think rosé is so versatile and goes with so many different types of foods. But at the end of the day, you should drink what you like. I love that idea because we feel like, well, there's all these rules and how, what I'm supposed to serve. And I'm thinking mostly for dinner parties or just a little gatherings. Like I want this to match or this to happen, but I think you're right. You just have to have what you like and then have something maybe that supposedly pairs well with the meal that you're making on the side. If somebody would like that, is that a good idea? Yeah. I mean, I, I think when you're entertaining, it's always good to be thoughtful of um, the different elements that make a meal uh, go to the next level and wine certainly plays a part in that. So maybe that's the time to do a little extra research and see what Mm. would go with it. But ultimately it should be something that you like. If you are, let's say uh, you're not a Cabernet fan, but that's what you read goes the best with the, the steak that you're serving find a different red than it's your favorite. So mm, mm-hmm. play around with it. Um, you might love Chardonnay with steak and that's okay. You find a, a big buttery Chardonnay mm. that is great with a piece of red meat. So you can find different ways to pair um, and, and make it make sense for you and your meal. I think it's always good when you're entertaining to have a, a red and a white option, though. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And I also do feel like when I drink a delicious wine and I pair it with whatever it is I'm eating, it always makes the wine taste better. Yes, definitely. And when you do get that good pairing, it's like, ooh, this is really good. And then you understand food and wine pairing and you think, mm-hmm. oh, what was I missing out on before? I should always be drinking my wine with something to eat. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, I had never been a big Riesling fan. And then mm. I thought, oh, let me try pairing it with a Riesling. It can go great with um, Chinese food or Thai food. And so we... Um, ordered some really great Thai food and mm. I, I poured a Riesling and I was like, this wine's delicious. It changed the whole experience for me. Isn't that great? I so actually, it is, it is worth seeking out the yeah. pairings and, and I think it's fun to taste, taste the wine on its own and see what it tastes like and then taste it with the food and see how different it is. That is so much fun and great advice too. And by the way, I, I'm not a Riesling fan either, or I thought I wasn't. I was in Napa mm-hmm. and we I had an amazing mm-hmm. Riesling. I couldn't believe it was Riesling, but so delicious because we had it paired with the right food. And it was an experiment for me, you know, stepping out of mm-hmm. my comfort zone. And so what happened? I ordered the bottles because I loved it. <laughs> yes, you're right. Step out of your comfort zone. Try something new. I always said that I was ABC, anything but Chardonnay. <laughs> And my husband's favorite thing is Chardonnay. So I've started trying more of it because we were always open in two different bottles. And guess what? Now I like Chardonnay. I love it. I love it. ABC. All right. So speaking of wine, you've partnered with my friends at Cooper's Hawk Winery for their wine of the month. And you said it. I'm going to say it. Rosé all day. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this specific rosé that you created. Okay. I loved working with Cooper's Hawk on this rosé. We had such a good time. Um, Tim, who's their founder and CEO, is just a a great guy and so passionate about wine. And he and I spent a day together doing blending. um, And so we we customized this rosé to be exactly what I like to drink, which I like a bright, crisp, um, uh, on the drier side. Mm -hmm. I'm not into sweet. Um, so it's a really light, bright rosé that is so perfect for summertime and mm. summer entertaining. It's so drinkable. Um, if you want to just open it up and if you're hanging out with some friends and you're not eating, it's great. If you want to pair it with food, it's 
awesome if you're throwing um, meat on the barbecue because anything like the sweetness of a barbecue sauce, the rosé is a really nice balance to it. It's also really great with shellfish, which we eat a lot of in the summertime. Um, so it's it's just a, it's the wine that you want to keep drinking all summer. I love it. So being a chef, you're obviously familiar with flavors and how things taste. Was blending a rosé a departure from what you're used to? And then how did you really come up with that blend when you were working with Tim? Well, it was super fun. <laughs> session. That was something I had never done before. It was a new experience. And I really hope to do it again soon. Um, so they had... Uh, different grapes for me um, that were just, so it would be like this one's a hundred percent Syrah. This one's a hundred percent Grenache. And we just basically went back and forth until we found just the right balance and percentage of each one um, to be exactly what I wanted. And uh, it was great. It was a great time. And it, it really is just all about personal preference and, um, and finding exactly what you want to drink. And for me, this is it. I mean, it sounds fantastic and, and certainly something to try. Now, rosé always reminds me of summer. And that, you know, you sort of said going into the warmer seasons, we want something lighter. Yes. And and really, no matter where I live, I'm always like, oh, I want these lighter, these more fruit forward, you know, drier things for the summertime. What is your favorite season to cook during? Because I know it's fun oh, to cook during different seasons. Summer. Summer, really? I, I am I am like a kid who is waiting the whole calendar year <laughs> for summer to come. It's like I never grew out of that. I guess I still think it cools out. <laughs> I love <laughs> summer. I I love hot weather. Um, I should I should live in a warm weather climate instead of New York. You and me both. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I detest the winter. Um, so I can't wait for sunshine and warm weather. I like it when you have a hot sticky night and you're yes. wearing a sundress dress to dinner and it's humid and I love being out on the grill um I think it's just an easy season especially when it comes to entertaining it's like any kind of etiquette police are gone it can just be casual mm-hmm. um it's it's a time to be it, it, a lot more is acceptable I think when you're entertaining um, in the colder weather months and you're inside, you feel like you have to decorate more and you have to right. pay more it's attention more to the table and yeah. everything. Yes, it's a lot of pressure. When you're outside, you're just outside and um, everybody's just a lot more relaxed. It yeah. lends itself to really relaxed entertaining. And I think that's when people have the best time and enjoy themselves the most. It's when they don't have the pressure. And I, as a host, want to enjoy myself as well. I love that. I just The etiquette police go bye-bye. Everyone's relaxed. When you're relaxed, your guard is let down. You can just have way more fun. I love the oh, hot Lord. weather, too. So like you in New York and me in Chicago, we are in the wrong mm-hmm. climate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we pay for I always say um, that I have uh, weather amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> like as soon as the weather turns nice, I'm like, I love New York. It's fabulous here. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as it gets cold, I grumble I and, yeah. and, and and say, I need to move. I just go to a warm weather climate for a quick vacation when it gets cold here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What, is, do we have a name of your rosé that we can get at Cooper Hawks? I it's just the the um, Katie Lee Beagle rosé. That's what I thought. All right. So you can get Katie Lee's Rosé at all 56 Cooper's Hawk locations, as well as Esquire on Oak Street in the Gold Coast. I love Cooper's Hawk. They have this wine, uh, this member wine club. It's literally, I think it's the largest in the country, 600,000. It yeah. It's a really cool, cool club mm-hmm. that they have. It's super cool. And I have uh, loved getting to know the people at Cooper's Hawk. They are just wonderful to work with. And I'm I'm so appreciative that uh, they brought me into the fold. No, they're great people. We love them too here. And I want to ask you a few more questions before we wrap it up. Quick fire answers from you. Your favorite mm-hmm. comfort food? Ooh, um, you know, I love my comfort food. I'm going to have <laughs> to do. say biscuits and gravy. Oh, biscuits and gravy. Good. Okay. okay. That's my number one. Best kept secret family recipe, which won't be a secret anymore. 
Oh, it's um, my grandma and my great aunt always made this big steak and gravy. And even though they showed me step by step how to make it, I cannot. And I, I'm convinced that there's something they're leaving out because theirs is delicious and mine is greasy shoe leather. <laughs> Oh, and you just probably have tried to make it a million times. You just can't get yeah, it to not be greasy shoe leather. <laughs> I just have given up. I love that. I know. My my Thea, my aunt, had this like pork loin recipe that she'd put noodles in there and red sauce. I can't get mine to taste her. I just can't do it. I don't know how she does it. So They, just, they have to touch. I know they do. Um, well, we've got your favorite spice to use. Does that still... Is that still garlic salt or is that considered a not spice? Um, I guess it's in the spice rack, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. I also, I love chili powder. I use chili oh. powder quite a bit. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, must have at your summer barbecue. Mm. Um, any party at my house, including a, a summer barbecue, has deviled eggs. <sighs> The deviled eggs. That's a good one. Uh, one thing that everybody forgets about f- at a dinner party that they need to not forget about. Ice. Oh, you need a lot of ice. So Always simple. Double the amount of ice that you need. If somebody calls and says, what can I bring? Say, just pick up a bag of ice on your way. You could never have enough ice. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I want to ask you this. Giving back is really important to you. So you do... Um, do work for um, helping the food bank in New York City. Anything yes. coming up with those guys? Yes. yes. So I'm on the board of the food bank for New York City, and I'm, I'm really proud to work with them. It's a great organization. Um, I would uh, encourage anybody in any city to get involved with their local food bank because it's a way to give back right in your community. Um, I just hosted an amazing dinner. Um, Bobby Slay cooked, mm. and my favorite chef, from Italy actually came and um, and cooked with Bobby. And we took over a restaurant in my neighborhood called Dante that is um, one of the top cocktail bars in the world, actually. They were rated number one, and I think they're number three this year. Um, so we took over the restaurant. We sold tickets and had an incredible evening, and we raised enough money for over 450,000 meals. So. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And you know, it's- yeah, it was amazing. And we we got the night completely underwritten. So Campari wow. and Revlon, um, who I work with, sponsored the whole thing. So every dollar went wow. to the food bank. That's great. And I you know, so, you know, for all of our friends listening may not be able to pull off something that grand, but seriously, just volunteering your time, your talents, yes. energy to your food bank. Yes, it is just about, even if it, if you see they're having a packing day and you can go and help pack food mm-hmm. and you um, do a uh, canned food drive at your place of business. And also, I um, I got I, I founded a, an organization within Food Bank called our, our Woman to Woman Campaign. I did not know that women actually go to food banks for their um, personal care needs as well. So. Oh. Food banks need, uh, one of the items they need the most are uh, things like pads, tampons, deodorant, toothbrushes, um, diapers, formula. Women rely on food banks for those things as well. Really, really good to know because I don't think a lot of people would understand that aspect of a food bank. And by the way, I just volunteered at the Greater Chicago Food Depository. We were packing bread. So that was a fun, it was a fun oh, afternoon. So we always say. Fantastic. Yeah, I thought you would be impressed by that and be really happy with my yeah. volunteerism. Yes, yes. It's so, <laughs> so good, especially when you can do something for people right there. These are your neighbors. That's right. And there's more people than you think are, are using the food bank people that you would be unsuspecting of of doing it um i love your recipes i love you on all of your shows your new cookbook came out in march it's called it's not complicated already a bestseller it was march of uh, two years ago it feels like it was this past march it was two years ago oh my goodness It's not complicated. I, I still think of it as my new book. <laughs> I probably need to get right in another one. Well, you have a lot of books. So there, you have how many cookbooks do you have? And you have a novel as well? I have uh, four cookbooks. I wrote a novel called Groundswell that was made into a Hallmark movie last summer. Fun. Um, and Lacey Chabert was the star of Love it. Her. And that was an, an incredible experience. Um, and by the way, you did mention that you were like, well, maybe I'll focus on writing. So is that was that around mm-hmm. that time when you wrote that novel? 
Uh, it was, yes. Yes, it, it was. Uh, I had written the novel. It had already come out, and I was actually working on adapting it into a screenplay for a different production company um, at that time, which didn't end up getting made. And then um, a few, few years later, well, several years later, <laughs> it ended up being with Hallmark. So it's another thing. It's like anything could happen. And um, if it doesn't happen right away, it, it might happen later and, and be something in your future. I love it. You stay open to it. I love my Hallmark channel. Well, listen, if this chef thing doesn't work out for you, you can just go back to writing screenplays, right? <laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm going to start doing it um, on the side. That's going to be my side hustle. I'm going to be writing some more. <laughs> we all need a side hustle. And uh, congratulations on the wedding and the baby. It Thank sounds like everything you. is going Thank great. You. My husband Life and I are going to the Amalfi Coast this fall. Any recommendations oh. on restaurants there? Oh, so many. Um, <laughs> Los Polio is where we got married, and that, that's my number one Um and I always tell people to go to Los Serenus and Positano and, and have mm. a drink um, there at their champagne bar. I love Aqua y Sol in Sorrento um, and Da Paolino in Capri. I love it. And really quick before I let you go, somebody is, we have a lot of people who love to cook, a lot of people who are really good mm-hmm. at cooking. But then we have some people that would rather do other creative things and they might start exploring mm-hmm. the idea of cooking as a creative outlet, any advice, how can they start? Is it just with the basics? It, it, you should get comfortable and build your confidence level. So start with easier recipes and always read your recipe from start to finish before you get started, because that way you know where you're going and there's not any surprises. Like my friend was making cookies the other day to, to bring over and he said, I didn't know that I, I was making them and it said that they, they have to chill for 24 hours. <laughs> I can't bring the cookies. <laughs> so read your recipe first. You know what you're getting into before you start. I love it. Uh, mm-hmm. Remind us how we can get more Katie Lee. Well, follow me on Instagram at Katie Lee Beagle, and I'm constantly posting recipes there. I love it. And your website? My website is also katieleebeagle.com. I love it. Well, I would say that creativity and Katie Lee are both essential ingredients in the kitchen and in cooking. So watch her shows, grab one of her cookbooks, and get creative in the kitchen. Katie Lee Beagle, thank you so much for joining us on Creative Living. Live better creatively. For more inspiration, visit janeklaus.com. Thank you for listening.